2021 BMW R18 Classic Tour Test Review. The hills are green. Time to up the saddlebags on the BMW R18 Classic and hit the road. California has two seasons, green and brown. Green is short, typically lasting only a couple months after winter rains. Come springtime, the rain stops, and the grass and wildflowers enjoy a brief moment of glory before they wither and lose their color. Brown is dry, dusty, and interminable, usually lasting from spring until after the new year. Brown is also the season of wildfires, which have become more intense and widespread in recent years. The Los Angeles Times recently reported that the American West's mega drought, now in its 22nd year, is the driest in 1,200 years. The last time it was this dry was in the early Middle Ages, only a few hundred years after the fall of the Roman Empire. Here in California, the only appreciable amount of precipitation within the past year fell in December, after which the spigot simply turned off. Warm, dry conditions in January and February encouraged green shoots of grass to emerge and wildflowers to bloom earlier than usual. After eight or nine months of brown, it's uplifting to see hillsides and fields carpeted with bright green vegetation. Last year was so dry that nothing turned green, so the brown season lasted for the better part of two years. When the green season arrived last year, I knew I had to take advantage of it. Since its debut in late 2020, BMW's R18 lineup has grown to include four models, the R18 Cruiser, the R18 Classic, which adds a windshield, saddlebags, a passenger seat, cruise control, and driving lights, the R18B Bagger, which has a handlebar-mounted fairing and hard saddlebags, and the R18 Transcontinental Full Dress Tourer. The Classic is the only model we haven't tested, and it was the perfect choice for a leisurely cruise north through the green hills of California's central coast. Getting into and loading slash unloading the Classic's 15.5-liter saddlebags is easy thanks to quick release, buckles for the straps and form-fitting drop-in liners, which are open-top tote bags with carry handles as well as snaps to secure them inside the saddlebags. For those who sometimes prefer a minimalist look, the saddlebags, small passenger seat, and windshield are removable. The day before my ride, an erratic winter storm dusted the mountains with snow but brought no rain. On the morning of my departure, it was a frosty 39 degrees, so I dressed in multiple layers and switched the classic's heated grips to high. With photographer Kevin Wing in my rearview mirrors aboard our Yamaha Tracer 9 GT long-term test bike, we cruised north on US Route 101 along the coast from Ventura to Santa Barbara. The classic small windshield parts the air smoothly around the rider's head and torso, but the rider's hands and lower body remain exposed. Rush hour traffic compounded by highway construction motivated us to turn inland and try our luck on State Route 192, through well-to-do residential areas nestled in the foothills of the coast-facing Santa Inez Mountains. We finally escaped the soccer moms and work trucks on State Route 154, a scenic byway that follows an old stagecoach route up and over San Marcos Pass. We took a break to warm up at Cold Spring Tavern, a former stagecoach relay station that dates back to 1865. Though too early for lunch, it's a favorite spot for delicious tri-tip sandwiches, chili, and other fare. The Rustic Stone Tavern holds special memories for me. Kevin and I ate there before my very first photo shoot, on a Buell XB12 XT, back in 2008. After crossing the Santa Inez Valley, we reconnected with US 101 and continued north, riding through the rolling hills of Santa Barbara County's wine country. The grapevines were still bare, but grass grew between the evenly spaced rows, sometimes kept in check by grazing sheep, and gnarled California oaks stood like giant sentries. All our 18 models are built on BMW's big boxer platform, with an air-cooled 1,802 cubic centimeters opposed flat twin, mounted within a tubular steel double cradle frame. When we tested the standard R18, it sent 80 horsepower and 109 lbft of torque to the rear wheel on jet tuning Steino, with all that grunt working through a six-speed transmission made it to a single-plate dry slipper clutch and shaft final drive. Like many heavyweight cruisers, the clutch requires a firm pull, both levers are adjustable for reach. My boot didn't easily fit under the shift lever, so for upshifts I used the heel shifter. Throttle by wire enables three ride modes, rock, roll, and rain, that alter throttle response, idle character, engine drag torque control, and traction control intervention. 
As the mode names imply, Rock offers more assertive throttle response and a lumpier feel at idle, whereas Roll is more relaxed, and Rain dials things back even further for sketchy conditions. The R18 Classic is a long machine, stretching 68 inches between the axles. Add in lazy rake and long trail figures, and the result is a motorcycle that's happier on straight roads than tight curbs. The wide pullback handlebar provides plenty of steering leverage, and the Classic is stable and obedient, but limited cornering clearance and a rear shock with 3.5 inches of firmly damped travel necessitate a modest pace on back roads. Broken, patched, and potholed pavement can be jarring. After warming up with hot coffee and stuffing ourselves with giant burritos at a Mexican restaurant off State Route 1 near Morro Bay, we wound along Old Creek Road, passing Whale Rock Reservoir and groves of avocado trees before climbing out of a tight canyon and riding through Ranchland. Crossing State Route 41, the narrow byway becomes Santa Rosa Creek Road, a narrow, neglected 16-mile stretch of pavement that's perfect for a BMW GS but a rough ride on the Classic. The road cuts through more ranchland and follows its namesake creek toward the coast. We spent the night in Cambria, a charming seaside village that's one of the last places to find food or lodging before riding route 1 north to Big Sur. Our home for the night was the Bluebird Inn, which for many years was a gathering place for rider staffers and contributors during the annual summer pilgrimage up to Laguna Seca, for the superbike races. Back then, the Bluebird was owned by the Cooper family, and they provide a cooler of beer and snacks for our motley crew. We'd share laughs and stories on the Bluebird's shaded patio before walking to dinner. The Coopers retired a few years ago, but the family that bought the place has retained the motel's cozy vibe and friendly atmosphere. Don't feed the elephant seals. Kevin and I woke up dark and early to find the seats of our bikes covered in frost. There was no coffee in our rooms, and nothing in Cambria opened until 7 a.m., so we grumbled as we quietly started the bikes and rode north to a parking area right on the coast for some sunrise photos. As we polished the BMW's chrome and positioned the bike just so, we heard the distinctive barking and fart-like noises of elephant seals. We walked a few yards to a small bluff to find a pair of juvenile male seals fighting each other on the beach. With no females nearby, this was merely practice for when the males got older and would need to fight full-grown alpha males, which can be up to 16 feet long and weigh 5,000 pounds, to compete for mates. A little further north, within sight of the Piedras Blancas Lighthouse, is a dedicated parking area and elevated boardwalk where visitors can view an elephant seal call-out area. A population of 25,000 elephant seals gathers at various times of the year along an 8-mile stretch of coast. Pups are born in December and January, and in the early months of the year you can see enormous alphas protecting their harem and exhausted mothers feeding their blackfurred pups. The adults go months without food or water while on land during breeding season, so mostly they just lie about like giant sausages on the beach. California Route 1 is world famous, and for good reason. It hugs the rugged coast for hundreds of miles, and the section from San Simeon up to Big Sur and Monterey is as beautiful and challenging as roads get. But in the shadows of well-known scenic roads are hidden gems like Santa Rosa Creek Road. As we headed south, past the iconic Morro Rock, we left Route 1 and took South Bay Boulevard past the marshy Morro Bay Estuary, and then Turi Road along Los Osos Creek and through Rolling Ranchland. My favorite road in the area, which I discovered just a few years ago, is Profumo Canyon Road. It climbs up and over the northern side of the coastal range, briefly turns to hard-packed dirt as it winds through a tunnel of trees, and then becomes Sea Canyon Road, which twists its way among apple farms and vineyards. It ends at San Luis Bay Road, which soon connects to Avila Beach Road for a short ride to Port San Luis, where an old wooden pier juts into San Luis Obispo Bay. Our 2021 R18 Classic test bike is outfitted with a few extras. It has the first edition package, $2,150, which includes black storm metallic paint with white pinstripes and chrome-plated levers, covers, fittings, and calipers. It has the premium package, $1,450, which includes BMW's adaptive headlight, headlight pro, reverse assist, and hill start control. And it has the select package, $225, which adds heated grips, a locking fuel filler cap, and an anti-theft alarm. Instrumentation is limited to a single gauge that includes an analog speedometer and an inset LCD, 
which displays ride mode, gear position, and an info screen that can be scrolled through various functions, tachometer, trip meters, odometer, voltmeter, fuel economy, average speed, clock, and date. A touring bike in this price range should also provide fuel level and ambient temperature. We averaged 38 miles per gallon from the 4.2 gallon tank, for a range of about 160 miles. The low fuel light comes on with one gallon remaining. End of the road. Two full days in the saddle gave me an appreciation for what the R18 Classic offers. Its traditional styling, especially the black and white pinstripes first edition version inspired by BMW's 1930s era R5, fits well within the expectations of many heavyweight cruiser buyers. But with the opposed cylinders of its big boxer jutting out to the sides, the R18 does not conform to the usual V-twin formula. The engine has the right sound and feel, and it produces plenty of low-end torque, but the cylinders create a barrier that prevents riders from stretching out their legs. On long rides, there's limited space for changing hip and knee angle. Due to the placement of the heel-toe shifter, brake pedal, and dual exhaust pipes, the small footboards are also somewhat cramped, at least for size 11 boots. The firm seat is supportive, but there isn't much room to move around. Beneath the R18 Classic's throwback aesthetic is a fully modern motorcycle with ride modes, cruise control, linked ABS, traction control, and other electronic rider aids. The rhythmic lope of its big twin, especially in roll mode, encourages a relaxed, unhurried pace to slow down and appreciate the view. Enjoy the season of green and the ride while you can.